And for those of you that are looking at the screen right now, when we talk about never produce a paper paycheck, that is absolutely the goal of adding a pay card like Rapid Pay Card to your uh, benefit offering to your employees. We would like for all of you to be able to get to 100% direct deposit, and that's what we're going to explain today, how you might be able to get there and how you can get there at no cost to your, uh, to your company. First off, let's talk about why you might need it and uh, the problem that we face uh, as employers in the United States. And very much uh, the underserved segment uh, could be the cause of your inability to get to 100% direct deposit. There are 821,000 more U.S. households that have become unbanked since the first FDIC survey in 2009. This was just updated uh, this year by the Philadelphia FDIC, and it represents a 0.6% increase in the number of un unbanked individuals. There are 8.2% of U.S. households are unbanked with approximately 17 million adults in unbanked households. 20.1% of U.S. households are underbanked. This represents one out of every five households, or 24 million households with 51 million adults. That's a large number, and many of, of those individuals oftentimes pass through your a uh, particular vertical of staffing at one time or another. 29.3% of households do not have a savings account, while 10% do not have a checking account. So how in the world are you supposed to get them onto direct deposit without offering them another alternative that doesn't put them at risk? And 25% of those households have used at least one alternative financial service, such as non-banked check cashing, or payday loans in the past year. Almost one in 10 households have used two or more types of alternative finance, financial services uh, in that period of time. That is also the definition of unbanked or underbanked as we go forward. In all, 12% of households have used an alternative financial solution in the past 30 days, including four in 10 unbanked or underbanked households. I would tell you that within staffing, that percentage is significantly higher because you deal with many transient employees and also many individuals that may be uh, walking through the process of all using alternative financial services and may fall into the unbanked. So next, we'd like to make the case for prepaid. And in making the case for prepaid, we're going to turn it over to Dallas um, so that he can talk a bit about uh, the problems that you all in staffing faced and some of the problems that he experienced personally, and he'll relate them to uh, some of his history. So, Dallas, over to you. Great, great. I appreciate it, Brian. Uh, as many on this call, I'm, certainly, I'm sure will agree, in the staffing industry, we have a lot of challenges that are uh, unique to the industry. But uh, in looking at, our, at, our, at the challenges that we face with our uh, payroll, and speaking from experience from where I was at before, my previous employers, you know, we had a couple of different employees, as I mentioned before. We had local offices that were, you know, around the country. Um, in fact, one of the companies I worked with, we had close to 100 offices around the U.S. And we had employees that were working on commercial construction job sites in each of those local markets. We also had employees that were working on the road. We called them travelers. With our local employees, um, our challenge with check distribution uh, what really came into play when it w with getting the checks to our employees and what our method of doing so was was to have somebody each week that would stay behind at our local offices and would be there for the employees so that they could come in after their shifts on Friday, which was payday, and pick up their paychecks. It was a great idea, but unfortunately what we found um, was that we had a lot of employees that were actually leaving early each day, coming into the offices to, to pick up those checks, as opposed to coming in at the end of the day after their shift. Some employees were coming in a couple hours early. Unfortunately, a lot of our employees were coming in at lunchtime and sometimes even at their first break in the morning. You know, one of the things that I think a lot of us share in the staffing industry is that we have a lot of employees that are working on a paycheck-to-paycheck -paycheck basis. So 
throughout the week, and certainly the first thing they think of Friday morning or payday when they get up is picking up that paycheck and taking care of their obligations. So in addition to them coming into the office and picking up their paychecks, which was already bad enough when they were leaving early, we had employees that were coming in, getting those checks, and then proceeding to go to the bank or a check cashing facility to stand in line, get their funds, and then oftentimes going, continuing on instead of going back to work to pick up money orders at the closest 7-Eleven or U.S. Postal Office, and then going further and driving around town to pay their bills. Obviously, this, this was very time-consuming. Obviously, it hurt the employees when it came to their compensation because they weren't on the job sites, they weren't collecting hours, so they were losing pay. It was also very expensive for them, Brian, to cash their checks. When employees were fortunate enough to have one of our um, – have an office from the bank that we drew our checks against in their local market – Again, we are spread out across the United States. Those employees did have the option to go into that lo local bank to cash their check, but they were still paying, you know, I would say at least $5, and in some places in the Northeast, possibly 8 or $9 to do so. But many of the employees who didn't have that option or employees who were looking for convenience would, I think, most of the time go to a check cashing facility where they were paying upwards of 10% to cash their check. And when we talk about employees that are oftentimes living paycheck to paycheck, that is quite a bit of their take-home pay that they're having to get up just to have access to their funds. So, unfortunately, that was a very costly thing for them. In addition to what it was costing the employees, we also had um, the lost revenue for the company because, obviously, in the staffing industry, our revenue is generated from billable hours. So if employees were leaving the job sites early, and we were, and, and they were losing hours, we were losing revenue. Not to mention the fact that we really upset our clients when productivity dropped off because of it. <clears throat> so we talked about our local employees. Um, want to talk about our travelers. And again, these were employees that were working for us in remote areas, oftentimes flying into a job site or driving a long distance to a job site. Because they weren't at home and they were out in hotels on the road, we had to have a way that we could get funds to them securely, most importantly, on time. And the only way that we could really do that and ensure that all that happened and we had the ability to track it was to send these FedEx. And unless we had an extremely strong relationship, Brian, with our, with our client there at that project site, we would, you know, that we could actually ask that client to hand out the checks for our employees when they were handing out checks for their own which was not the norm um, because obviously we didn't want to inconvenience our clients and ask them to do more work for us. We would send out those FedEx envelopes individually to each employee. And on average, we had about 400 employees that were working on the road any given week. And at $25 for each envelope, um, I believe that's, that's roughly $10,000 a week, over half a million dollars a year just in the FedEx uh, postage cost alone. Now, in addition to having access to their traditional payroll, with our employees traveling, they, ought, they always got a per diem. Now, when employees, sometimes this is the case for employees throughout their time on the road, but if nothing else, I would say about 90% of our employees, when they were traveling for us at projects, needed at least an advance in the beginning for the first two, three, four weeks in order to get them going since oftentimes they hadn't been working for a couple of weeks and they were a little bit behind in funds. So we would give them an advance, typically two to $400. And the way we would do this advance is we would actually fund a card. I guess we kind of called it a pay card, but it was a PIN-only card. So it wasn't what we see oftentimes today used, you know, like an open loop card with a, with a logo on it from Visa or one of the other major card carriers. These were cards that were only... Uh, PIN cards and could only be used at an ATM. And with the provider that we were using, every ATM that they went to, they had to pay a fee. So the way that we yeah. would actually, yes. If I can ask you there, um, sure. Are, are those are those cards what you would call compliant for paying payroll within the different states, or 
even using for per diem in that respect? Well, Brian, now that I know what now that I know what I know, they certainly are not. Um, they, uh, you know, as we know, um, employees when you are paying them funds through payroll need to be able to access 100% of their pay down to the penny in order to be compliant in all 50 states. Uh, certainly, this card was uh, very far out of compliance um, because they did have to pay a fee in order to access those funds. And on top of that, being that they could only access funds, access funds with a pin-only card through an ATM, they could only access their money up to a certain dollar amount and could also only access those funds in increments of $20. So that presented another challenge. Um, we would have to, each time, you know, if somebody, for example, was asking for $200 for an advance, we would have to actually load on $205. And the reason being is that we wanted that employee to be able to access all $200 that we were giving them as that initial advance. Now, that $5 we were charging, you know, we were charging back to them as well when we collected the advance from their paycheck. What got really tricky was that we actually had to instruct the employees each and every time we gave a card that you would have to go to the ATM and you really need to pull out all the funds at one time. Don't try and don't do a balance inquiry because that'll charge you a fee. Don't try and take out a hundred dollars here and a hundred dollars there because each time you do that you're going to pay a fee. And because we only gave you five dollars, you know, so you could access all of your funds. If you were to try and do multiple transactions, that five dollars is going to be depleted and you're going to start dipping into your actual advance. So more times than not, we had employees calling us back, even after the instruction, you know, I only have 180 some odd dollars left on my card, or I, I, I took $100 out, and now I can only access 80 of the remaining $96 that I have. What can I do? And we'd have to actually load on more money for fees in order for them to access the remainder, um, of course, which we were charging back as well. Um, to, to compound the problems, we we had uh, you know employees that were traveling. They only had access to cash through our uh, pin only cards. So this presented a problem with many things. I mentioned that we had a lot of employees that were flying into remote areas. When they landed, they needed a rental car. Without the ability to um, use a, a debit card or a credit card to secure that rental car, and rental car companies not accepting cash, we found ourselves actually having to rent the cars for them. My concern, um, as well as many others, is of course this will, this could potentially open you up to more liability. Uh, it also really limited the hotels, Brian, where they could stay. You know, I, I traveled quite a bit with the, uh, with, with the companies I work for and, uh, had the opportunity to meet with our field employees, uh, projects all over the country and actually internationally as well. And I can tell you that some of the hotels that these guys were staying at, for this very reason, were places that I personally wouldn't want to stay and I certainly wouldn't allow my family to stay at. In addition to everything that we've talked about, a lot of our employees still have families back home and they have obligations back home. And they have a spouse or possibly a child back home that may have a need such as paying for prescriptions or getting a car repaired or something of that nature. It was always a challenge and a burden on them and a concern in their back of their in the back of their mind. How do I get money back to my family? So the answer obviously was oftentimes them having to leave work again early, again losing you know pay, and uh, tracking down the nearest Western Union to where they could wire money home to their to their spouse or their children in order to meet those obligations. That also um, created the same concern when it came to paying bills. You know, the last thing that you want when you're on the road, I can only imagine, working uh, seven days a week and 10 to 12 hours a day, is worrying about having, worrying about leaving work, having to track down a place to get a money order, find an envelope and stamps, getting to a post office and sending money back to pay for your bills. In addition to everything else, we had a lot of stop payments. Um, as many of us in the staffing industry know, uh, the, the workforce oftentimes is very transient. So we have challenges in our local markets where we have employees working that 
are moving from apartment to apartment or house to house. And oftentimes checks are sent out, and then it's after the fact that we find out that they've actually moved and we actually get the information for a change of address request. In addition to that, with travelers, oftentimes we'd have guys that were traveling on the road and uh, they'd stay the first week at a hotel and word of mouth would uh, would get around and they'd, they'd find out that there was either a, a better hotel or a cheaper hotel down the road and they'd make the move. Of course, we were always the last ones to know. It was always after the check went out and that always meant that we had to do a manual check. We had to do a stop payment. And we had to uh, FedEx, of course, that check back out again at $25. In addition to the uh, the stop payments, another another one of the uh, unique challenges in the staffing industry is that we're not it's we're not always just dependent on internal sources for processing payroll. And wh- what I mean by that, and I'm sure a lot of us here on the phone uh, deal with this, is we are reliant in addition to with our clients meaning that our employees have time cards, they uh, they have to get signed off on, and until those time cards come in to confirm the hours that our employees are reporting to us, we're typically not processing payroll because we're waiting for that final approval. And we often found that, uh, the companies I work for, that we would have time coming in, a fair amount of it on Tuesdays, a lot on Wednesdays, and then we'd have a pretty fair amount of it also coming in on Thursdays and even Fridays. And what this did having different paydays throughout the uh, the week and a mad rush towards the end to get payroll completed and out on time was create stress in the payroll department, create a rush, and when you have those two working against you, unfortunately, you, you're going to have human error. And when you have errors uh, and a need for correction and pay, that again, that means a lot of manual checks and a lot of FedEx expenses. So to, to, to keep going on this, Numerous phone calls, we got them at all hours of the day. We got them at night. We got them on the weekends, holidays. And we heard uh, reasons for just about everything um, for an employee needing money, everything from meals to uh, baggage fees and a lot of other interesting things in between. We've talked about the the workforce that we have working for us out in uh, in the field, those those employees that are working with our clients. Um, where I have worked in the past, in addition to those employees, we've had very large. We've had a very large sales force. In fact, uh, one company I was with, we had over 200, 200 individuals that were in a sales capacity. And because they didn't have a corporate card, what we would do, and all of us would do this, was with our expenses, whether they were client meals employee appreciation, you know, meals or, or you know, get-togethers, uh, whatever it may be, we would put together every, all of our expenses in an expense report, turn it in and get reimbursement. And what this meant to the company was a lot of manual checks. So uh, I would imagine that this is, this is just another area where we could have saved a lot of time and a lot of money having a, a true pay card in the payroll department. Dallas, thank you for outlining the many problems that everybody in our audience faces every single day. And now it's up to to us to build a case for how the prepaid rapid Wex Rapid Pay Card with the Visa logo can counteract those issues. And just to let you know that the the market is growing and will expect to uh, grow significantly, I wanted to bring you some information from Visa. And as you can see, market today in 2012 is a $986 billion market related to prepaid, and the payroll card is part of prepaid. And the opportunity continues to grow uh, significantly all the way to 2018. It is also important to see all the different types of users, and they uh, go all the way from the underserved segment all the way to college students and teens, as well as the mass bank. Uh, everybody on this call that has a bank account would be part of the mass bank, and we have many uh, employers that find with split direct deposit that some of their employees that are already banked will choose to have a secondary direct deposit onto uh, the Wex Rapid Pay Card. The opportunity is sizable and is largely untapped still for payroll cards with less than 5% penetration, but uh, the opportunity is large. 
And those that still receive a paper check in the, uh, across the country is still large. It is uh, interesting to see that uh, uh, you have a significant amount of the population, almost 75%, uh, or 75 million rather, with 64%, that do in fact have direct deposit. And then the checked uh, numbers of employees is about 35 million, roughly 30% of the total population. And of those still receiving a check, um, 13.7 million do in fact have bank accounts, but they still choose to receive a check. And there are all kinds of reasons for that. Sometimes the employee does not want their employer to know that they have a bank account or uh, does um, doesn't necessarily uh, trust the banks. And that can be a, a good reason also for having a prepaid uh, pay card, such as the Wex Rapid pay card. So why are prepaid cards a payroll option? Uh, mainly is that it provides uh, the employee with a network-branded prepaid card that uh, can take simple direct deposit with efficiency, security, and flexibility of direct deposit. So it's safety, security, and uh, uh, speed that is provided with this particular option, and it is provided to you today through Tricom Funding on the Wex Rapid Pay Card. Most prepaid cards benefit from broad acceptance because they have that brand that Dallas was speaking about. The Wex Rapid Pay Card is a Visa debit card, and it is a debit card that is accepted anywhere that Visa is accepted all across the all across the world. Um, it also may provide you a point of free cash delivery and employees access for their payroll completely free. In fact, it allows for the employees to have 100% of their pay available to them on payday at zero cost. And Dallas talked about the problems that you all face with cashing a check, especially if it is an out-of-state check, uh, for your employees, the Wex Rapid Pay Card with the Visa logo allows many, many options in the fact that it can be used that anywhere that the card is accepted also can be used in the five free ways that, that are available for your employee to replace the action of cashing a check are going straight to one of the 98,000 uh, Visa member banks going to any United States Postal Service in order to get a free money order with the Wex Rapid Pay Card. Uh, and cash it on the spot. They also can have a check that is uh, attached to the card where they can go to any 4,200 Walmart locations across the country, write themselves a check, and get 100% of their cash for free. They call customer service and request a check, and a check can be mailed to them uh, so that they can have access to their pay. They also have the ability to do an ACH transfer to a bank account and uh, maintain their security of their bank account while getting all of their pay over to their bank, bank account completely free. The other component that's important about having a Visa debit card through Tricom funding and utilizing the Wex Rapid Pay Card is that much of today's economy requires electronic payment. Think about all the things that Dallas described in his problems that are corrected if you have the ability to uh, use a debit card to make the payment, renting cars, uh, shopping online, paying a bill online, uh, all of those things. So the user of a prepaid card today and a pay card today uh, are those employees that are seeking a non-credit payment tool that helps them control their budget and offers them the same fraud and loss protections that you and I uh, enjoy on our uh, debit card every single day. And the other aspect that, that comes to play for the employees is that they have the ability to have their funds loaded by payroll just as direct deposit would happen for you. It happens for them. And it also can be used for things such as reward payments, incentive payments, uh, thank you uh, gifts, uh, or even they can sign up for government benefits, and all government benefits can be delivered onto uh, their own personal Wax Rapid Pay Card themselves. It also helps with um, with the aspect of unclaimed property because this uh, particular account is a virtual bank account that is owned by the employee, and once they stop working for you, all you need to do is simply stop paying them. An additional benefit that is brought to you by having the 
uh, pay card available is that employees that are parents of college-age students may want to split their direct deposit and uh, have the ability to uh, have a secure, safe, convenient way uh, to get money to their student without their risk of running up debt. These cards cannot be overdrawn. You have no ability to spend beyond the amount that's on the card, so it really, really is safe for uh, the consumer and the cardholder. The cards work just like a traditional uh, debit card with the Visa logo on it, and they are a prepaid card that allows them to shop online anywhere that a regular uh, debit or credit card can be used. You can use it to pay bills, book airline tickets, rent a car, buy dinner. In other words, it provides you with financial dignity. And all these cards allow for uh, consumers to take cash out at ATMs. The Wex Rapid Pay Card is a member of the All Point ATM network. There are 44,000 of them all across the country, actually out, outside of the country as well. Um, and we also provide an additional uh, network called MoneyPass that's an additional 20,000. So you have all kinds of access points. But interestingly enough, in today's world versus even two years ago, the ATM is not as critical as it used to be. In fact, many consumers like the safety, security, convenience of having a virtual bank account with a Wex Rapid Pay Card because of the Visa logo. The Visa logo allows for the fraud and loss protections of the zero fraud liability that comes with Visa. And it also allows the cards to uh, have immediate access to their funds on payday. So while I'm working on your job site uh, in the morning, I get a text message alert that allows me to know that the funds have been loaded onto my account. And by lunchtime, I'm shopping at the uh, Burger King across the street, ordering my food, and uh, uh, without having to worry about you know, running out and cashing that check. But most importantly, I'm also able to get cash back rewards because I went to Burger King and the Wex Rapid Pay Card is actually incentivizing people with cash back onto their card if they take advantage of certain promotional things that are available to them as a card holder. Prepaid cards help the consumer control their budget because it doesn't have any interest charges. In fact, the only interest that comes along with the Wex Rapid Pay Card is a real benefit. It is a savings account that is free for them to sign up for, and they can gain an interest-bearing savings account that is uh, unique in the marketplace, and they also don't ever have to worry about running into overdraft fees or anything that sounds like an overdraft fee. So who is the user for prepaid cards? Is it you? It very well may be because the marketplace is changing, and in today's world, prepaid cards such as the Wex Rapid Pay Card offered by Tricom uh, can, in fact, be a viable alternative to a bank account. And the reason for that is the cost models are changing, and the acceptance of prepaid cards has risen dramatically. Uh, you will see that there are new fee structures associated with banking accounts, such as checking accounts. Those of you that have not received a letter from your bank talking about the change in your fee structure probably should check that mail. I'm not very good at checking my mail related to information coming from my bank because I do everything online, but I do know that my fee structures have changed, and now many of the bank accounts, checking accounts, require a minimum balance in order to maintain free checking. So if I have to keep fee $1,500 a year or more in my bank account, is it really free? Not really. Also, the, the lowest one that I've heard is $100 uh, in order to maintain uh, free checking. And for most of our cardholders and probably most of your employees, it's impossible for them to maintain a $100 balance. So, therefore, they are moved over to something that costs between $10 and $15 a month in order to have that checking account and has the ability to be overdrawn, which can be a real budget buster for those employees. The pay card allows for them to have free uh, a free banking, a free bank account without a monthly charge, and if all they uh, want to do is do simple point-of-sale transactions, uh, swiping the card at the point of purchase, oftentimes that can be free as well. There are fewer branch offices also in lower to middle income communities and many times in places where your uh, employees may be working, so getting to their funds becomes a challenge. And uh, one of the things that we help you with at Wex Rapid Pay Card is to provide you with outstanding education to your employees 
so that they understand how to use their card and use it in the most economical fashion. It allows for uh, those employees to understand uh, ways to stay out of business and uh, stay out of trouble, I'm sorry, and to uh, conduct their, their basic financial uh, business in a, in a fashion that uh, maintains their dignity as well without having to utilize those alternative financial, financial service uh, locations such as the check casher. Let's talk about the estimated annual costs for basic checking versus cash versus general purpose reloadable uh, prepaid card, which are those cards that are available in Walgreens or any place else such as the check casher and then pay card. This is a bit of an eye chart, so I made it simple for you so that you can actually read it easier, and that's where we'll go through uh, this particular graph. As you can see, a bank account with even very uh, favorable uh, fees associated with the bank account, and red is typically the most expensive uh, financial tool available to your employees. Here comes cash right behind it. For the, for the basis of cashing your check and getting to cash, it is still an expensive alternative, but most importantly, it doesn't allow you to operate in today's environment in most cases. Then you have the general purpose reloadable card, which is a debit card that they can use to sign up for direct deposit, but it requires acquisition costs by the employee, and the fee structures are not as favorable as pay card. Pay card averaged out at $83 a year uh, in order to use, and I would tell you that's on the higher end, and that is for somebody that is probably paying at least uh, one or two bills uh, online or taking care of or taking advantage of value-add services that might be offered by the pay card. You do have the ability, if all you want to do is replace the action of cashing a check, to utilize the Wex Rapid pay card completely free. And that's why we also go to the factor of sometimes you face, my employees like to cash checks. Well, they have the ability to cash a check with the Wex Rapid pay card. All they have to do is go to uh, any of the Walmart locations and they can cash that check completely free. Or even better, go to the exact same bank or place that they were cashing their check before. And because it has a Visa logo on that card, they simply walk up to the counter swipe their card, enter their PIN number, and they get 100% of their cash off of that card for free, and they've replaced the action of cashing a check. If they want to uh, uh, go a step further and have that actual check sent to them, they have the ability to call customer service, and the check can be sent to them for free, or they can go into that U.S. Postal Service, which there's almost one in every zip code today, and swipe their card. There is a fee for the Postal Service money order, but our system is smart enough to know that it should not be charged for, and they can write that money order for 100% of their pay and cash it right there at the Postal Service for free. The other option that they have is that ACH transaction straight to their bank account or to sometimes we have folks that use it to pay um, maybe their landlord or, or somebody else that they might owe and have that ACH write off their card after every payload uh, for free. In the staffing industry, uh, the potential for pay card is huge because as we sh showed in the problem associated with staffing is you have a high percentage of of unbanked employees, and the check distribution uh, problem for your diverse workforce spread out over uh, much of the market that you're covering is significant, and the most expensive way to deliver that payroll is not, as Dallas stated in his problem, which was significant with FedEx. The most expensive way is you. You are the, you are the producer that is out there trying to generate revenue for your company. And when you're spending time taking uh, being a courier for paychecks, you're losing potential revenue, and that can be significant. So the staffing industry, the potential for pay card, again, is huge because you have a high percentage of uh, unbanked employees. You, most of those employees do not have uh, checking accounts, so therefore they're going to the bank or the check cashing service and they're spending significant monies, and uh, WEX Rapid Pay Card replaces the action of cashing a check at zero cost to you as the employer and potentially zero cost to the employee if all they're doing is getting cash 
and we talked about the five free methods to get 100% of their pay off of the card every time that card is loaded, and it is uh, the most robust methods of anybody in the marketplace with the Wex Rapid Pay Card, so that can be a big savings for your employees. The Wex Rapid Pay Card is, um, <clears throat> as I said, five free ways, but also uh, let's hand it over to Dallas and get his flavor on the savings that come along by using a pay card as well. Well, uh, looking at the uh, the check distribution we have up here on the screen at twenty five dollars each for four hundred. Again, that's you're, we're talking about a savings of ten thousand dollars a week or uh, five hundred twenty thousand dollars a year, and that's uh, that's pretty that that sounds pretty good to me. That's of course added right back onto the uh, the bottom line. Um, you know, tra travelers requiring per diem. Uh, we talked about the cost there for them to uh, access their funds. And obviously, if they can go in and, and access their funds any of those five free ways, we're, we're saving them not only a ton of money, but we're saving them a ton of time. And, you know, of course, uh, as you mentioned, it is simply direct deposit, so it doesn't get any easier than that. Uh, there is no change to the, uh, to the uh, process uh, for the payroll department. It's handled exactly like uh, for, for your weekly payroll, exactly like the um, uh, direct deposit that you're currently doing for those employees that are receiving it. And because it's a prepaid Visa card, uh, all of those problems that we talked about where the employee could not make a purchase due to a need for electronic or digital payment, uh, they all go away. And let's see, we, we talked about uh, travelers, uh, you know, requiring help to get money home and paying bills. Brian, as you mentioned, uh, they certainly can pay their bills over the phone or online with the, uh, with the rapid pay card. In addition, uh, with a companion card, they can also do the split direct deposit or a card to card transfer to their family members back home to pay for those prescriptions or car repairs or anything else that's needed. Um, one of the things, Dallas, that I like, that I really like is the text message alerts, is that uh, on, on my particular account, I am signed up for text message alert. It um, is a free service from uh, WEX. Uh, I do have unlimited texting on my phone, so I don't get a charge from my provider as well. But I get a text message alert to my phone notifying me that it's payday. But also, even if I do a card-to-card -card transfer um, to my daughter, for example, when she needs money and I'm on the road and I send her some uh, some cash to fulfill an obligation that she might have at school or a need that she has, she gets an alert letting her know that the $15 that she requested is there immediately. And the card-to-card -card transfer through our mobile web uh uh, app is also really, really simple to do and exciting uh, for for me as a parent to be able to solve problems uh, with my daughter easily and for her also to have the safety of not losing that cash. So that's a, that's a way that I use it. And also, in addition to that, I have uh, bill pay is something that uh, we do oftentimes take advantage of, and many of your cardholders may take advantage of that as well. Uh, as Dallas talked about in his example, you have employees that uh, need to pay bills while they're on the road, and uh, this is something that uh, is able to be done off of that mobile app or onto the simple website uh, that cardholder can take advantage of. Where are you allowed to use pay cards? Is there any place that makes it more difficult? There are the states listed here uh, by Visa where you can uh, mandate direct deposit, and the uh, ones below, Florida, Iowa, and Virginia, have particular dates that the employee must uh, be uh, employed after those dates in order to go forward with mandating direct deposit. But with our five free ways for the employee to get uh, their pay off of the off of their card for free. Uh, they 
uh, we are compliant in all 50 states. So you shouldn't have fear about moving forward with the WEX Rapid Pay Card. Uh, it can be used in all 50 states. Prepaid card satisfaction is there. That's one of the concerns that many uh, individuals like you that are running a business is, are my employees going to like it? Well, cardholders do like it, and who are they? They aren't just the downtrodden. Uh, in fact, many of the cardholders today, 43% are Gen Y. One-third earn more than $45,000 a year. 34% have college degree or higher, and they're very satisfied with the service that they receive and that is designated here in this particular chart where you can see that 94% of the users found the cards to be useful in some form or fashion and like it. This uh, also emphasizes the point that I stated earlier. Where are the cards being used? And as you can see, the smallest bar is in fact ATM. If I showed you the same graph uh, three years ago, it would be reversed to where probably uh, 9% would be at stores and restaurants, and 40% would be at ATMs. But today, everybody understands what a debit card is, and now the fact that you can even use a debit card at places like flea markets, it's very, very well accepted and high, highly utilized by your employee, and it provides them the safety, security, and convenience that they require in today's uh, uh, marketplace where on a percentage basis, the cost of a pay card to the consumer is only about 1% of their total earnings, which is a very positive thing for everybody involved. So what are the reasons why a card may not achieve your company goals? They are the following. Lack of awareness by you and by your employees. Misconceptions about the uh, pay cards by you and by your employees. Misconceptions about employee receptivity. Most times, that's just a preconceived notion by management. And finally, ineffective communication with your employees. So you want to be sure that you select somebody that is going to provide value to your employees and solve problems for your employees. And hopefully, we've been able to make that case for you today. But the beauty of, of uh, many of the cards is they're growing with technology and they're enabling mobile, and you can see in today's world with the WEX Rapid Pay Card, you have the ability for those uh, employees that are on the move in order to utilize real-time text, two-way text messaging for everything from receiving their balance, which is they just simply text in BAL, check their savings account by simply texting in SAV, check out their transactions. Um, they get four listed at a time, I believe it is and they text in T-R-A-N-S, and if they want to see more of them, they just simply text more, and you keep going on down the line. But the point is, is that everything can be accessed by your employee via text message, which is critical, because oftentimes some of your employees don't have access to a computer, and you also don't want to have to turn over access to a computer at your uh, workplace. And text messaging is a real advantage. Savings for all is also great. It's no cost. It also allows for uh, some interest-bearing uh, savings, and it is kept in a separate account, so they have to knowingly take money out of their savings and move it over to be spent. Uh, the employee gets paid immediately on payday, uh, and they will be notified usually mid-morning of payday uh, via a text message if you signed up for it. And there's also in staffing the possibility of increasing your revenue because the employee is not leaving the job early. And you might say, well, you don't let them leave early. But oftentimes, uh, Dallas has expressed to me that in his history that the employer or their boss felt bad for the employee because they did not have access to their money and would allow them to leave early. And with the pay card, it allows you to tell all of your clients that no one ever needs to leave early because they're all being paid by direct deposit. So in summary, uh, we tried to answer the case for why pay card is a great alternative for you to pay your employees in the staffing industry. Um, we gave you an overview of the unbanked employees, hopefully talked about the employee benefits of pay cards, and finally, uh, how we could impact that. And that is the end of our story, and we're open for questions. 
Okay, great. Thank you. I've got a couple questions that have come in here, so um, let me get let me get to those here. So the first one is, can you tell me you know, what's what's the process of implementing um, and getting people enrolled on the pay card system? Okay, and. Um, Shelly, I may need a little bit of your assistance here in case I misspeak regarding uh, the TRICOM funding process, but my understanding is all they have to do is contact their particular uh, payroll individual within TRICOM. Uh, in my case, I usually reference Rick Kirkey. Um, mm-hmm. in, in the individual's case, I, they may have an appointed designated person in order to uh, express some interest in the pay card. The program is completely free. And all we do is uh, get them signed up onto uh, the Wex Rapid Pay Card. It's a very simple agreement. Then uh, we go through a training process where we can show them how to issue those cards. It allows for the employer to simply have a stock of uh, the instant issue Wex Rapid Pay Cards on hand. At the time that they employ an individual such as me, I'd walk in, apply for my job, you're going to staff me uh, that day, you simply hand me the the rapid pay card, pass along the uh, direct deposit information that you do through our web portal uh, onto the payroll group at Tricom, and I am paid on direct deposit from that point forward. But uh, it's very, very simple. It takes about uh, 20 seconds in order to register a card, and we provide you all the training on uh, the initial basis as well as on an ongoing basis if you have more people that need to be trained on how to uh, enroll a person in a card. Great. Um, let's see, another one here. Is Does the card belong to the employee or does it belong to my staffing company? The card belongs to an employee. The employee is uh, is the owner of the account. And that is important for acceptance of the card, number one. The employee wants to know that that it's their account and that they are the only ones that can see it. It also is important for uh, abandoned property or achievement that you might have to deal with. That goes away because you're paying every employee uh, right onto their own account. Also, if the employee works uh, at multiple jobs, they can use this uh, they can use this card. Uh, in order to uh, to get paid by direct deposit anywhere else that they work. Okay. Um, a few more questions here. So if the card is lost or stolen, how soon to get it replaced? Is it possible to overnight it? It is possible to overnight it. The employee or the card holder employee can call customer service and request that. But the best way to get the card is to uh, simply go to your branch office where you'll have a stock of cards and you just hand them an envelope and tell them to call customer service. Uh, our lost and stolen uh, process is, is very um, easy and also is, is unique in the fact that we have something called card linking. So once that initial account is established and the person is paid uh, to an account, if they get, they can have as many new pieces of plastic as necessary. And as soon as they activate that old, that new card, they will immediately have access to their funds. They can also uh, simply, uh, when they call in to activate that new card, they will cancel the old card, and that uh, protects that old card. And all of our cards are debit cards with a PIN number. So unless you write the PIN number on the card, which they're instructed never, ever to do, uh, your monies are safe and the zero fraud liability protects them. There was another question that I saw pop up on the screen, Shelley, that talked about the charge for a transaction at the store. And whenever somebody selects uh, a credit, that is a free transaction for the employee, and uh, they can use the card completely free uh, at, a, uh, at a store because that's one of the methods by which we make money is the swipe fee that's paid to us by Visa. Uh, whenever the person uses the card. Another question that, that I got was what happens to any balance left on the card that may not be accessed 
uh, via the ATM if the balance is too small. Um, first off, there are multiple ways to get your money off of the card all the way to the penny. We told you five. They always have the ability to go into uh, any Visa member bank and get it all the way down to the penny, even if it is 38 cents uh, that they can take it off. They also always have the ability to contact customer service and get us to uh, pay off the balance of that account with a request to check. And uh, there are multiple ways in which they uh, are able to get all the way down to those odd cents off of the card, and they can do that uh, typically for free. So uh, there should never be an instance where they are locked in only to the ATM. That's what makes our card uh, different than many of the others. I don't know if you saw this other one here, um, Brian. It said, I don't understand how you receive all paycheck from an ATM since some ATMs have a limit. Correct. And you're talking about uh, limits such as an ATM might have a $75 limit, might have a $250 limit, might right. have a even a $500 limit. In our case, again, it's 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 the only time that people feel like they're they're limited is when they stay locked onto the ATM. The ATM is not the main way in which people utilize our card. In fact, it's today, as I showed in that one graphic, utilized about 9% of the time. Most of the time, folks are swiping the card the way you and I do uh, in order to use it as their virtual bank account. But if they simply want to replace the action of cashing the check, they will go to uh, one of those five free methods to get all of their money off of the card. And if you'll notice, in those five free methods, not one of them was the ATM. It was going to any Visa member bank, which there are 98,000 of them all across the country, swipe their card at the counter and ask the teller to give them all of their money. And at that point, uh, they can get in excess of multiple thousands of dollars and odd cents back from the teller. Uh, it also is the ability to go to a U.S. Postal Service. It also is the ability to do a uh, write themselves a check and go to Walmart and the ability to get a uh, check from our customer service if they wanted or ACH to a bank account. Okay, it looks like I've got one more question here for you, Brian. For individuals that don't have a cell phone, is there another way to alert them when funds are available to you? Dallas, do you want to handle that, or do you want me to? Sure. Uh, well, you know, there, there are several different ways that they can check the funds on the card, you know, their balance, their transaction history, um, really all of the transactions and utilize the same functionality that all of us enjoy with our bank, traditional bank accounts. Um, if they don't have a cell phone, so they aren't able to receive the text messages, which are an extremely valuable tool, we actually find that, that most people today not only have cell phones, but also, uh, you know, for the most part, have smartphones, which can take advantage of our uh, mobile smart uh, smartphone app. Um, if they don't have that phone, then what they can do is they can call customer service. Customer service is always free, and they're always available, three, uh, you know, seven days a week, uh, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. And, again, there's never a charge for them calling customer service. And they'll can always they have somebody... Pay... I'm yeah. sorry? Can they use a pay phone, Dallas? Of course. Is they... It's a toll-free number. You're talking about calling customer service, Brian? Yes, sir. Of course, of course. And if they have access to a computer, you know, whether it's at work or, or back at home or at a friend's or a library, they can also... Uh, access all of their account information, um, you know, via the uh, the cardholder portal. Okay, I've got another question here. Um, is there an option to deposit funds into the card coming from the card owner, not coming from the ER or government agency? Uh, I will I will answer that. At this point in time, there is not due to uh, anti-money anti laundering or uh, rules associated with that in the Patriot Act. There will be here in the near future the ability to uh, add some funds in the form of check capture, and we expect that to be launched here in the next six months, which will allow, say, an individual who has maybe 
a check from a, for a birthday gift, or even if you had somebody else or even yourself that you were able to write a check where you could go ahead and capture that check with, uh, with a smartphone and load the funds on in that fashion. Uh, there is one other option. I saw, I'm sorry, I misspoke. They can go and take advantage of Green Dot or Western Union money loading so that they can load uh, funds onto the card in that fashion as well uh, if they are near a location that is a Green Dot loading location or a Western Union loading location. Dallas, did I get everything covered there? You sure did. All right. Oh, I think I have one more question here. Um, when is there a fee charged and how much? What? So give some examples of when a fee would be charged, a transaction where a fee would be charged. Okay, a transaction where a fee may be charged would be, let's say it, it is uh, I was paid yesterday. I went to uh, the All Point ATM yesterday that is located in the Target lobby, so and in the lobby of a Target store, and I was paid yesterday $256. Yesterday, when I went to that ATM, I took out $100. Today, when I go to that ATM, um, I would uh, maybe take out another $100. I may, uh, uh, I will encounter a fee uh, at that time, and uh, honestly, I can't remember the fee structure that Tricom has. Shelly, you could be able to tell them that um, by pulling the fee structure for, um, we give beneficial fee to Tricom, so uh, if somebody wants to follow up with me specifically after the call, I can tell you exactly what that fee would be. Um, we do have the ability to show in a cardholder how they can minimize those fees, and that's why it is more economical than a traditional checking account. And I can give more clarity to that question after this call if I can pull the Tricom fee structure. And I, I've got um, both Brian and Dallas's contact um, Information up here, I've got your, your email addresses, so I'm assuming that's probably the best way to reach either of you. And I think that's all of the questions. So with that, I think we'll wrap everything up. I'd like to thank our participants in today's webinar, as well as Brian and Dallas, for sharing their knowledge and expertise on pay cards. The recording of the webinar will be available on our website at tricom.com backslash resources. If you have any questions, or you would like a copy of today's PowerPoint presentation or the recording, feel free to contact Brian, Dallas, or me. Thank you all very much again for participating in today's webinar and watch for information on our next webinar session in May. So thanks, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Bye, now.